Hey, Nerd Herd, it's Dynasty Nerds, and we're back with our rookie breakdowns. Kicking off with the quarterback class, we got a lot to talk about today. Some of us are extremely grumpy. Some of us have great hair. And some of these guys are really good quarterbacks, and other ones are... Got a stomachache. Ready, set, hut, hut. Welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast, where we discuss dynasty strategy, rankings, and all things NFL. So get ready to geek out on fantasy football with your host, Rich Dotson. And welcome to the Dynasty Nerd Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm Rich Dotson. He's Matt O'Hara. Hey, hey. He's Garrett Price. Uh, how's it going? And he's Jared Lee Wackerly. What's up? <laughs> Don't be so grouchy. <laughs> <laughs> You could tell so we him, made it. You could tell him that what's up. He's grouchy. Look at him. Yeah. Come on, Oscar. <laughs> Look, you're calling him grouchy. It will be very interesting once we talk to you about all these these quarterback prospects. Listen, we talked a little bit before the show started, and I'm grouchy. You yeah. are. Yep. And it's it, a bit it your dog before the show. It has permeated throughout the entire room. We're all grouchy because of me, <laughs> including Jared, who got here late. I didn't He's even grouchy. know. Yeah, I know. You didn't even hear that first conversation. You could just feel it you in just the room. Feel uh, the grouchy. Every time I hear grouchy, I think of Oscar the Grouchy. Now. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and, I, and to this day, the greatest comedy special I've ever seen is Dave Chappelle's Kill Him Softly. And his his Sesame Street sketching at is perfect. He's like, Oscar, why are you so grouchy? He's like, bitch, I live in a garbage can. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. You trying to say I live in a garbage can, Rich? I don't. I'm just grouchy. I saw today. your whole. <laughs> you've, you've seen the SNL on Sesame Street, right? No, the, the dude that plays Hopper and and uh, Stranger Things is in it. Get out! Oh, I did see that. It's hilarious. Yeah, it is funny. I would like the to Sesame see that. Street. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. So we are uh, we made it. We're kicking off our rookie breakdowns. So for the next almost two months, basically, yeah, uh, we are going to break down all these rookies that we think are draft eligible. Sometimes people get drafted and we miss out on some guys, but sure. we can come back to them after the NFL draft. Uh, and remember, the we're not doing any rankings. We're just breaking down the prospect and giving you our film study. And we've been doing this for 10 years straight. This is our 10th year of film wow. study. And uh, historically, we have outperformed uh, NFL draft capital. We do pretty so well. we've been doing pretty well. It's, you know, when people, some people are like, oh, how did Dynasty Nerds really take off? I really do always a credit to the most part to me. And then the second part to... <laughs> Obvious. I mean, obviously, <laughs> to, to and to our rookie. I thought breakdowns. you were saying to me, and then you were gonna make a point on like what no. was the most valuable thing to you. Hard stop. Then I realized there was nothing else coming after that. It was a, it was that a hard, was a period. Uh, period. Of Maybe even exclamation yeah. point. <laughs> no period. Period. <laughs> dot 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 dot. <laughs> <laughs> dot, 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 dot. Film study. Yeah, so film study. Um, we, we always kick it off at the quarterbacks. It's always the, the best one to kick, kick it off. I love having Jared here. If everybody does not know, Jared is a former D1 That's right. quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> si, senor. Wow. And, wow. A, and a man of many words. <laughs> As I said, me. <laughs> um, let me unplug my iPad here. And yeah, so you know, if, if somebody he's always got a great take on these quarterbacks, and we always say that well, we don't always say we start saying recently, got this from Jared. Me and Jared talked about this as well. Was you know we really look at these quarterbacks as draft capital pieces, right? Like where do they go in the draft? Like we really want them if they're a top ten pick in in the NFL draft in super flex leagues, they should essentially be one, two, three in the draft order, essentially. Um, Sometimes you get which, which very well could happen this rules, year, which it could be, and you want to be a first round pick because draft capital does matter. I know, I know, Jared, you looked into this as well. Yeah, I did some research today um, in preparation for this, and this is kind of it's something I've been working on for a while because I know we want to get into like rookie draft hit rates based on where they're taking the NFL draft and where their ADP is um, in rookie drafts in general on the Talking Dynasty show with Garrett and I. So I've kind of been putting all this research together, um, and since we're talking quarterbacks tonight, figured we could go through real quick just to kind of kick off our quarterback breakdowns of just what you can expect from a quarterbacks um, based on where they're taken in the NFL draft. So um, if they're taken in the first round of the NFL draft, and this this data goes from 2015 to 2021, that's that's the sample size I'm using. Nine years. Yeah, and I'm. I'm um, a hit. 2015 it, to 2021. That's not nine years. Oh, I thought I thought, I thought you were about to. <laughs> I love that you're pointing to the dome. As, 
And I, Look that, how smart you. Are. That's nine years ago. Well, I mean, <laughs> that part was. There's got to be a couple of leap years in there, right? Where you double count some stuff. No? <laughs> yeah, get hit. Nine year sample size over six I, seasons. Yeah, I see where you got the nine years. <laughs> I cut it off at 2021 because. What did you say about my years? A hit. So a hit, I, I, I equate years. a hit to if they produce. How long some of these guys have played? If they produce the top 12 season in their first three years in the NFL. Right, so, so you have to cut off. it off. Yeah, right. Right. You can't right. be having I mean, the most CJ recent Stroud, stuff. Is, is, CJ Stroud was obviously a hit last yeah, year. Yeah, we right. got Lorena Bobbitt at some point. Yeah. yeah. Got to um, cut it off somewhere. So if they're drafted in the first round, they have a 44% chance to produce a top 12 hit within their first three seasons. And then I also expanded it to top 24 hits because in super flex leagues, I mean, that matters. That's valuable. Yep. Yeah. And most of us are playing in those leagues now. So that goes up to a 72% chance that they're going to give you a top 24 hit within those first three seasons. Then when you go down into, into the round two, a top 12 hit is 20%. And then a top 24 hit is 40%. Round three, all the way down to round seven, it's pretty much zero percent it's gotta be almost nothing yeah yeah so you're really looking for first and second round quarterbacks um and then in third rounds third round picks have a 20 percent chance to hit uh, but that sample size is pretty small so i'm gonna say you you get a a few randoms i was gonna say russell wilson's Dak prescott Kirk cousins you you get a few of those guys in the third i mean brock Brock purdy Purdy wouldn't have been included in this because he he was just you know last year and obviously the other one that was a huge hit with Tom Brady and that he will also wouldn't be in this because he's sure. too old. So it does happen, right. but still you can expect sub 10% chance. Right. Almost zero, every, every almost 0%. That. And then yeah. I, I also, I, we talked about the last couple of years of like, we really want to look for those top 10 picks. So I was like interested in really diving into that. And, um, to be honest, I, so I split out like top 10 picks versus non top 10 picks within the first round only. And it was pretty close still. Um, on the hit rate. So it was 44% chance of producing a top 12 hit for top 10 picks and 43% chance for non top 10 picks for top 12. Um, it got a little more spaced out when you go to top 24. So top 10 picks produced a 77% chance. Um, they would produce a top 24 hit and then non top 10 picks the 57% chance. So that's good. I mean, you're going to at least a QB two if they're a top ten pick, like an eighty percent chance. You're going to get at least a QB two, which that goes a long way in superflex. I mean, that's huge. I mean, obviously you're rounding up from seventy seven to eighty, but <laughs> we'll, we'll allow it. Yeah, Close. <laughs> not just a hat rack, my friend. <laughs> not just a hat rack. No, and sir. Not. I mean, you, you you said I I played I played coll- collegiately. Um, I do like watching quarterbacks, but I don't spend as much time on them because of this simple fact right here. I mean. There's only so much we can know from the couch, um, so we got to let draft capital and, and really from, dictate from our decisions. And from playing, you you know this. Football in general is, is big on this, but specifically the quarterback position, there's so much as far as what's going on between the ears, yeah. more so than just physical abilities and gifts, more so at the quarterback position maybe than any of the other positions. So, you know, you don't have to be the sharpest tool in the shed to be, you know, a good receiver or running back, but it's it's tough to not be at the tip-top of your game as a quarterback and, and still be productive. And so. that's the and that's the one thing that we can we cannot quantify. We can't put a number can't. on how quickly this guy's processing the information in front of him because we don't know what he's being asked to do on they, any given play and we don't know they've tried can't. to do it. Right. And they released a, supposedly a terrible score for CJ Stroud last year. And right. He looked pretty darn good to me. <laughs> like he was processing just fine. Just fine. Yeah. So for, the, for quarterbacks, we really do look at draft go- capital, where they were drafted. Like Jared said, they're drafted in the third round, fourth round. Like it's, it's You're drafted in the fourth, road. fifth round of your rookie draft because there's just a whole bunch of turds there, and you're going to take the one that at least has a quarterback upside when they get a start. Right? Like, a, like maybe like an Aiden O'Connell or something along those lines that has at least a path to potentially so get an opportunity. Me so, yeah, I mean, it, it goes a big distance. But that being said, we still break down the quarterbacks every yeah, single year, and they're still extremely important, super flex, and they should be the first off your boards, essentially. Definitely, they go one, two, three, which we kind of expect them to go this year. We, in order of Caleb Williams, Jane Daniels, and Drake May, in some kind of order, mm-hmm. the first three picks in the draft, which really that doesn't happen very often at all. So to see something like that happen to be nice. And even when you have a need, you know, at receiver, and there's three really good receivers in this draft, like, mm-hmm. like, True wide receiver one opportunity difference makers. Like upper echelon, top of the tier, 
can be in there with Jamar Chase, Justin mm-hmm. Jefferson, CeeDee Lamb, with Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, and Roman Dunze. The quarterback still would outweigh that position as well. Those guys at least have the skill set to, hey, I'm really good at quarterback, really good. I would trade for that receiver anyways if he, if he hit and take that, go ahead and take that receiver. I would be okay with that. Kind of like we were okay with B. John last year. Mm-hmm. Even though that was a 50-50 hit because, yeah, it worked out if you would have taken Bryce Young, but you certainly would rather have C.J. Stroud over B. John Robinson and Superflex right now. Sure. So that being said, all we you know we prefaced it pretty well. I think we did. Let's go ahead and uh, face has been prepped. We've been prefaced. <laughs> let's get let's get in here. There's no more facing to be done. <laughs> all, that, that, all that hay is in the bar. Let's get the, well uh, before we get into the single players. Apparently, sorry, one more thing. No. It hasn't been faced. I will say overall, no, out of QB classes that we've broken down over the last ten years, this is one of the best QB classes I've seen. And I couldn't agree more. I think this is a fantastic class. Fantastic. What do you think, Matt? I mean, I think it's an okay class. Unbelievable. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so grouchy. Unbelievable. <laughs> so grouchy. Some people say on the show, like, wow, they agree too much. Not these. Not, not these today shows. we don't. Not these two. Jared, what do you think of this quarterback class? I think it's solid. Um, I think there's a couple really, really good prospects as far as fantasy football goes. Agree. Um, I think A couple upsides? I mean, we'll get into them, but I think a couple of them that are hyped up a little bit need to sit for a couple years, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, but well, let's see who these guys are, huh? Let's see how let's do we it. feel and who we don't. Cause right. I, feel, I feel the same way. Yeah, let's get started, right? Let's do it. All right, great class. Let's first, go. First guy, Caleb. But before Bull. we do, oh, geez. <laughs> attention, dynasty nerds want to play dynasty like a pro. Check out FFPC, where serious dynasty leagues have thrived since 2010. You can dive into a world of over. 1,500 la- leagues with stakes ranging from $100 all the way up to an elite $5,000 league. FFPC isn't just a game, it's a community. With unique formats like TriFlex and year-round trading, it keeps the fantasy spirit alive all year. Here's my favorite thing about FFPC leagues. They stand the test of time. They've never had a single Dynasty League fold thanks to their orphan season. When you join an FFPC league, you can count on it staying around. They've completely revamped their Dynasty for Sale pages now on the web and app, making it easier to scout and snag the perfect Dynasty team. Have you ever dreamed of turning a diamond in the rough into a champion? FFPC Orphans offers that exact thrill. Join the ranks of savvy managers at FFPC. Use our code NERDS for $25 off. Visit myffpc.com. Explore the dynasty landscape. Find your next challenge. The FFPC, where your dynasty journey begins. Remember, that's code NERDS for your special discount on your next league. I just want to tell you guys how much I love you. <laughs> All, right, love you man. All right, first guy up, Caleb Williams, quarterback USC. Six foot one, 214 pounds. He had nine and three quarters inch hands and 32 inch arms. He is 22 years old. He'll be 23 in November. That's all we got on the measurables. He didn't do anything else there at the combine as far as testing or medicals or any of that good stuff. So that's really all we have to go on. Yeah. So he didn't test out, test out his pro day, but you're talking about a player that, you know, 2022 Heisman Trophy winner. People were talking like, hey, we'll be the first person since Archie Griffin to come out here and win back-to-back Heismans. Mm -hmm. And his 2022 tape is different than his 2023 tape. His 2023 tape is way more off schedule. Like, a lot of things breaking down. His offensive line wasn't good. He obviously lost Jordan Addison. His receiving court wasn't as good. I know we had Brendan Rice, who... He's fine. He's fine. He's no Jerry. Um, Mm -hmm. But... (laughs) You know, like, things were way different in 2023. And his 22 tape is actually better than his 2023 tape. But when you look at a player that has the opportunity to join that Pat Mahomes echelon, like, Caleb Williams has that skill set. When you're talking about a guy that could, you know, he first of all, he senses pressure really good. Like, he has really good pocket presence, I really senses yep. uh, pressure really good, and can move. And he keeps his eyes downfield the whole time as well. And he get, he gets rid of the ball at all different angles. And that's where he does Mahomes comps, right? Where, like, he's on the move. He's getting the ball out at all different angles. And he looks good there. When you look at him in the red zone, like, 
46 touchdowns and one interception. Like those are fantastic numbers there. When you look back at his old um, his old numbers, but something can get out there. Any different arm angle, he can make that throw. He's got a really good arm. Can all three different levels of the field. His accuracies, okay, okay, yeah, it's okay. There, there are times his ball placement is behind guys that are on crossers. So I do have some questions on on that kind of stuff. You mentioned you know Pat Mahomes as he can throw from all these different angles. I when I when he does that, it at times looks bad. You know, I mean, like he does it and it'll get to the guy. But it's not like a pretty pass by any means. It, it, it almost looks like he's trying to emulate Patrick Mahomes, but he's not quite as good as Patrick Mahomes, in my opinion, at doing that kind of off-scheduled and kind of goofy angles and all that kind of stuff. And I think that word try to make, so after that, a couple of words, try to make, is a real good, like, the epitome of, like, his 2023 season. Like, he tried to make things happen a lot. I agree with that. And, and one of my notes is – Sometimes he just needed to throw the ball away. Yeah. And, or just run. Just throw the ball away. Like, don't try to make that pass. Don't try. To, you got to lo- learn when you got to cut bait and just toss the ball out of bounds. And he, he was just trying to force some stuff. And that, and those are the kind of things where I was like, this is, this is a, this may be a bad decision. So I, I had a couple of questions on his decision making. I know he's out there trying to make plays. He's, he is the type of guy he's fearless out there and, and always wants to make a play. So I get why people love him. I get why he's going to go first overall. So I don't want to make it sound like I don't like the guy. I just, when I see him play, I just have some questions about him forcing things. And I have questions about it. he's constantly throwing off a bad platform off a bad throwing angle. I, I want to see him more often drop back, do something on schedule, throw it and that, and that pass be accurate and on time and where, where it needs to be for the receiver to catch the ball and keep going. I feel like this is a very somber talk for a guy that is probably going to be first overall on one of the best quarterback prospects that we've had over the past five, six, seven years. Like Caleb Williams is a fantastic athlete. When, when you watch, to me, when I watch him play out there, and yes, I agree, there was a lot of hero ball stuff at times. But when you have a defense that is would struggle in the MAC, which his defense was truly, like, atrocious. Right. He had no help. There. Anytime they don't score a touchdown, you're thinking, we might not be able to win the game. Like, if we don't score on every single drive, we might not win the game. And he still only threw five interceptions on the year. So, even with all of that, he still wasn't, you know, forcing too many bad throws. So I think overall, I think he's got a really strong arm. I think he's a fantastic athlete as far as being able to run and 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 make plays with his feet. And when I see him outside of the pocket, which the NFL is moving to more of a uh, off script, what can you ad lib? What can you do outside of structure? And I don't think that there's anybody better at that than Caleb Williams. He lives there. When he's out there, you could, it's almost like he's playing chess out there with these guys. Watch his game against Washington, which is arguably the best defense that he played against all season. There are times where he would literally, like, he varying his speed to, to, to defeat angles, spin moves in the open field, coming up and pressing the line of scrimmage, hopping up in the pocket to be able to make an on-time delivery. Like, he did all of those little things right. So, for me, I know that there's been a lot of talk about other quarterbacks, and, and we'll get to them in both this episode and next episode. For me, it's it's Caleb Williams, and then we can have a conversation about everybody else in this class at the quarterback position. Ooh, but for see, me, and that's it's Caleb Williams. It's, I have a 1A, 1B. Uh, so, I, I, oh, I went like... This was somebody I went full circle on, right? Mm-hmm. I came into it thinking this guy is the number one. He's been so hyped up. There's uh-huh. no way anyone's going to unseat him. And then I watched his tape, and then I watched some other people's tape, and I was like, oh, I, I can kind of see I, there's some warts here, and, and there's some. And then I came. By the time I got all the way through the quarterback side, come back and be like, yeah, Caleb Williams is is the guy. Is the guy. He's going to be the number one guy. I I came back and watched Caleb's last as well, and I, I was like, yeah, he's. He yeah. should definitely be the number one pick in the draft. He, he sure. is the he's the best guy here. That and that. So I didn't want it to be completely negative. Mm-hmm. I just don't want it to be completely positive. Right. The the only one thing I'll say is he he the number of fumbles that he had. He needs to clean that up. Thirty three wow. fumbles over the course of his 
collegiate career. That's a lot. That's a, a, that's a lot. And, and a part, lot, a lot. Part of that is that Brett Favre gunslinger mentality. Yeah. Um, that's if I had one negative, that would be the big thing that he needs to clean up. And you, okay, my bad. No, no, no you're, you're good. You had mentioned his legs. I think he. I think he's really good at moving around. I don't mm-hmm. think he's ever going to be a thousand. He's never going to be a thousand yard guy. I doubt he's going to be like. 500 yard guy. I think it'd be about 500, but I was thinking yeah. like Aaron Rodgers esque when he was young, like yeah. 250 to 400. He's going to live in that range. For He's going to be a lot like world. Mahomes. Like yeah. it, it, the comps are funny because it's like, okay, comparing with the best and, and he might not ha- end up having that ceiling necessarily. I, he does have the ceiling. He might not reach that ceiling though, but play style. It's, for it's a lot like Pat Mahomes. I think he needs to get into an offense. I don't know what his best fit is, right? Like, we're talking about Cliff King, Cl- Cliff Kingsbury <laughs> mm-hmm. at, with the number two overall pick, possibly trading up and 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 getting him. I don't know if that's the best plan. Somebody that knows him, knows what he can do, mm-hmm. or somebody with fresh eyes in the NFL to teach him the pro game. Sure. Hey, these thing, nail down these few things, incorporate that mm-hmm. into your off schedule stuff, and you're and the sky's a limit because if if he, I think marries a pro style approach where he can drop back, hit that back foot, and let go of the ball. With his off schedule stuff, I think he's which the sky's the limit. I, I will say this: he did a lot more of that the previous season and in his I, Heisman season. Yeah. It was a lot more in rhythm, and you see it at times. It's not that he can't make in rhythm throws; like he does it every game. No, it's just not his go to. The offensive not, line was pretty bad. It's not his go to, and I I just wanted to see a little bit more accuracy in those situations. There mm-hmm. was he was hitting the wide receiver, but maybe it was on the back shoulder instead sure. of the front shoulder. That kind of stuff, little things that can be cleaned up. Yeah. And and he could be an upper echelon guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the difference between a really good guy and an upper echelon guy, in my opinion, is is just those little things that he needs to clean up. So, yeah, as far as talent goes, I think it's just easily he's the most talented and offers the most upside out of all the quarterbacks, which is why he's going to be taken first overall. Um, and I agree. I mean, I don't really have much to add with what you guys have gone over. I think everyone's probably talked about Caleb Williams' strength and weaknesses to – um, um to, no high, to no end. Yeah, absolutely. The word Beat is. that dead horse, Look at, so to me. speak. Couldn't Open find out. my words. It's you <laughs> figuring out words, Rich. <laughs> but um, I think just coming from the Lincoln Riley offense and into the NFL, we've seen guys do it already. Yeah. Um, and that that one read and go uh, type of system. Um, I, I just think guys have kind of already defeated that that con, uh, and it's just. He, he has to just get rid of that hero ball mindset that we saw in 2023. There's just a lot of, like, why is he holding the ball? On? Like, it kind of reminded me of Justin Fields when he was coming mm-hmm. out. The white, Like, he's holding on to the ball so he, long. He does have, uh, in this class, he has the longest, uh, what is that, uh, time per, per snap or, you know. Yeah. Wh- whatever that exact terminology is. I can't think of it off the top of my head. But it, it's the longest in the class, which is, on one hand, I can understand how it's a little bit concerning. But when you actually watch, you're like, I understand. He's running around. Wow. Save yourself. He's, he's rolling out. He's, he's making plays he's that other guys can't make. Yeah. I, you know, I, Lamar Jackson always has a really high one at the NFL. Like, those types of guys tend to have longer time. I will say, like, when watching, I watch Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels back to back because <clears throat> I know we're going to talk about him in the next show, but mm-hmm. it's just, it was like, almost night and day the way Jaden Daniels like was going through his progressions and like hitting guys in rhythm and right. stuff. And I, I and agree with Caleb Williams. Be, I didn't see much of that at all, but you can just see, you can just see the talent in there. And if they're able to get, get that going um, and get him in rhythm and, and making his reads the correct way. I mean, then the sky's the limit, obviously. And, so. and, and when we're talking about that sky, I mean, we're talking about a guy here. This is a guy. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> this is a guy that, for being the number one overall pick at quarterback is arguably going to one of the best situations outside of like Andrew Luck, probably, you know, and they had all that calf space and around there. Um, situation of a number one quarterback that we've seen in a very long time where he's going to a team, the Chicago Bears, that has a ton of cap space, that has a good oh, tight end, capital. has a true number one receiver in DJ Moore, and has another top 10 pick to put another really good receiver around him or whatever they want to put around or him. Or offensive line, which they need as well. Offensive line, which would be great, but they could probably figure like fix that in free agents if they want. But Maybe. You know, a lot of people have them trading back up in the top five to get like one of these good receivers. I would love to trade back up in the top five and get like a Joe Alt, right? Like a, get a really good offensive lineman yep. and, and then grab a receiver at pick 2-9 in the second round. Like, there's so much draft capital is what I would do. But he's going to a really good situation already. So... 
for him, you know, that structure should already be better. They have a good defense. Um, they, they have, they have what you know, we have DJ Moore to throw the football to people are like, mm-hmm. Oh, let's give him a good young receiver. I mean, DJ Moore's 26 years old. He's a, he's a proven number yeah. one receiver. So Beast. for Caleb Williams and Superflex, he's, he should definitely be the one, one. I will say though, we'll talk about when we get to the, the person next show, I'm in a situation where I did two drafts last year where you could take, I t- you, t- you put the draft picks a year ahead. We're doing an anniversary league as well. Mm-hmm. It's how I do, I just did another draft that way as well. Mm-hmm. All my future drafts, I do that where I include both rookie picks. Mm-hmm. I had the one, one in both drafts. And I think I'm going to take one Caleb Williams, another one, Jane Daniels. And I'll explain why I don't think I'm going to take Jane Daniels, another one in the next episode. We get the Jane mm-hmm. Daniels, but to me, I do have a one, a one B. And that's not from an NFL standpoint. If I'm running an NFL team, like I'm taking Caleb Williams. Yeah. But from absolutely. a dynasty yep. fantasy football perspective, I get it. Man, that other guy sure makes my nips hard. Dude. <laughs> he gets you chunks. Yeah. Gets me chubbed. You're right. Chubbed. <laughs> <laughs> so Caleb Williams, fantastic prospect. You know, it's 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 hard to find a perfect prospect. Even these receivers uh, will be able to break down a little bit, like, hey, mm. they can do this and that. So Caleb Williams. Arguably, all of our one-one in superflex leagues. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So okay, across the board. Yeah, we'll see. Did you, did you say argu- arguably our one-one? Or well, did... I mean, I have a one. I have a he one. He has B. a one B. He's I like the only one. <laughs> I like the way you worded your tweet today earlier today too. Just the way you ranked your quarterbacks. It's just like now oh, let the, let the draft decide the rest, pretty much. Yeah, and then something. I had one guy arguing with me. He doesn't even follow me, but he's arguing with me. And I'm like, <laughs> he's like, well, then you can make a point. What about this quarterback? This quarterback? And I was like, I saw that. And I was like, okay, well, what about this quarterback? This quarterback and this quarterback? And That's actually like, what made me put those uh, stats, the out metrics there? that I went out at the beginning of the podcast. Yeah. That's why I actually tweeted them because I was reading that uh, and I, I retweeted. Like, it. And I was like, dude, yeah, I can make the same argument. And I was, and I, my point was, I was like, dude, you can't hit a home run if you don't swing the bat. And yes, the quarterback is the biggest risk you're going to take in these super flex drafts, these rookie drafts, and we take them high. But if you're going to win championships, these are the guys that you need to go win championships. Yeah, that's how you build a foundation for a super flex team is by loading up on young quarterbacks and hopefully a couple of them hit, and then you can build the rest of the team around them. Like we, yeah. I say it all the time on this show. I say it all the time. Even a quarterback two, quarterback 16, is out producing some wide receiver once. Especially in six running point, back one, yeah. six point pass touchdown yeah, lead. Right. So yeah. like, even like, oh, he's quarterback fifteen. Okay, well, he's a top fifty overall fantasy scorer. Like that's, uh, ooh, yes, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> wow, yes. oh, gassy, <laughs> you know, hot <laughs> bothered over here. <laughs> Woo, <Woo-hoo>, quarterbacks. <laughs> Instead of the ground scouts, you're like, what? This uh, is a guy. <laughs> I live in a garbage can. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's just such an important position. It's why it's super flex leagues and. It, it's worth the gamble. And I'll strike out swinging at that ball every single time. True. So, <laughs> next Wait, quarter. hopefully not. Hopefully you're not strike out swinging out at that ball swinging. every time. True. <laughs> hopefully you're, you're hitting it sometimes. No, I've just seen him swing a bat. <laughs> he's going to strike I'll out swinging. It. 50%. <laughs> I don't want to end up with Russ Wilson. See that turn get cut again? Mm-hmm. Two teams Gosh. will eat $50 This has nothing to do with Russ Wilson. I know. I just hate him so much. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody tell his family. <laughs> They're gonna pay him thirty nine million bucks this year. Eighty million five to go five away. million dead cap to give him forty million dollars. <laughs> Two teams gave you over twenty million dollars not to be a part of your team. <laughs> See ya. Such a turd. Bye bye. Oh, I hope he goes to the Steelers. Be oh nice. man. Be nice. Next. All right, next guy up. Oh, JJ nice. McCarthy. <laughs> quarterback Michigan, six two and a half, two nineteen, nine inch hands, thirty one and five eighths inch arms. He's twenty one years old. He won't be twenty two until uh, t- uh, January twentieth next year. Yeah, he'll play the whole year. Twenty one years he, old. So he he didn't run the he didn't run the forty, but he did have the sh- uh, twenty yard shuttle. So that's four point two three in the three cone, six point eight two seconds. That guy was moving. I was, was flabbergasted. He was moving. That's good. That is that's really good. really good. Yeah. He's super athletic. That is really really good. Yeah, I was like. He's the only quarterback to do it. I'm like, wow, that's like the best three cone. Like, you would that, do it too if you could run it in four yeah. or uh, under seven. Yeah, six point eight two seconds. I was like, that was a receiver. Seconds. I'd come away pretty happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even Romo Dunze, who had a good one, had a six eight eight. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Uh, so JJ McCarthy, really interesting prospect here. Very different than almost all of the other quarterbacks that we're going to discuss. One, he's very young. Yeah. Almost all the other guys that we're discussing are 23, 24 years old uh, by the time the season starts. So. Uh, one of the youngest quarterbacks, uh, at least of of the main guys in this class, one of the youngest guys here in a long time, and, and one of the fewest. Uh, oh, one how of the old f- is he? He's twenty one. 
21. He's just, not, he's not just, be 22. Just turned 21. Just in, turned 21, like two months ago. In July. Month I, just, I didn't know if we actually said it or not. Maybe yeah. we did. Well, man, Still listen. We did. Right. I missed man, it. You're right <laughs> in the room with us. Uh, <laughs> Very echoey. But, in that but also, <laughs> one of the only quarterbacks that has been on the same team the entire his entire career. Yeah, he's not almost, going anywhere. Crazy. Almost all of these guys uh, started we, one place. He just enrolled Trans- a couple of years ago. <laughs> and, and, and well, doesn't stop most of these guys these days. How old is one, he? One and done. <laughs> Jared, he's 21. And done. So, uh, JJ McCarthy, he was one of the top uh, quarterback recruits in his class. Ended up going to Michigan. He <sighs> went, came from IMG Academy. So, it's, it's basically a college already. Yeah. IMG is... It's it's nuts. If you've never seen anything on IMG, it's that high school is it's basically yeah. its own university. Yeah. Before, I am good. Yes, yeah. I am good Stanford. university basically. Yes. Uh, so he went there, then went to Michigan. Uh, really productive player, and well, actually, I, I take that back. He was not a very productive. Kicked player. Ohio State's ass. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa! I mean, he did. He did though. Yeah, I'm saying whoa. Don't remind me. <laughs> uh, one, obviously, he was a national champion this year. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of good things happened, unfortunately, for that program this past year. <laughs> All of that being said, JJ McCarthy was arguably the most difficult evaluation for me of all of these guys. Same, because. Most of what I saw, I really liked. Yeah. I think he's got very good mechanics. Very good. He's sound everywhere. Se- super sound. His, his feet are always in the right place. He's using, like, his his upper body and lower body aren't fighting each other. Like, just quick release. He's got a strong arm. Like, all of those things are good. And he's a solid athlete as well. Like, he can make things happen with his legs, too. So, all of those things, and being a younger prospect, like, I should be salivating over this guy. Here's the problem. With at Michigan, they didn't throw the ball much. They and in fact, if you look at most of his biggest games, and when I say biggest games, not necessarily as far as his production goes, but the best teams that they played, the last four games of the season leading up to the national championship game, all against ranked opponents. In those games, he had 148 yards, 147 yards, 221 yards, and 140 yards. Like, they did not ask him to throw the football in big situations. He would have a throw here or there, and when he did, it looked really good. But that's the hardest part for me in evaluating him is if I'm taking a quarterback in the first round, I want to know that that guy can carry the load. And he was never asked to. So it's not a knock. It's just an unknown with J.J. McCarthy at this point. I don't know if he can be that guy or not because he was never asked to be that guy because they didn't need him to be. So it's a really odd evaluation compared to a lot of the other quarterbacks in this class. In the Dynasty Nerds film room, um, where we watch all our tapes, so we have all these cut-ups where, you know, if a quarterback's in the on the play, we don't show the handoffs. We just show plays where he's going to have the ball in his hand where either he's throwing it or running the football. Where, all, you know, receivers, running backs, are usually like six, seven-minute games. Some running backs, you can get like five-minute games. Quarterbacks are usually anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah. J.J. McCarthy's games? Five. <laughs> Six minutes? Yes. Yeah. If you watch the Penn State game, which is the only other ranked opponent he played other minutes. than the last four, seven of eight on the game for 60 yards. They threw the ball eight times against a ranked opponent. Didn't matter. They when, won. When you're watching that, a lot of tape, it's very pleasant. I think that one was like four minutes and 30 seconds. Oh, my God. When I saw it, I was like, yes. School yeah, grabbing I that did. one. I was the same way. With every, every time I came, it was like seven minutes. I'm like, yes. I'm going to go through this whole so game. So fast. Because there's a lot of games like I'll go back. I'll go back. Off, if I see a player, really like, I go back and I hit the space bar like this. So I'm playing it in slow motion. Oh, you, you know, can hold shift. You can hold shift and go over. And it'll, it'll slow mo. Oh, yeah. Tell me that. Remind me that after the show, so I know this. I just hit. I just sit there and tap the. <laughs> 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 We're just Sometimes doing the old video easier, games. Yeah. <laughs> when you're, when you're His finger has like a six pack yeah. after it. <laughs> if I'm on fair, my iPad, I have to do it that way. But sometimes, though, to be fair, like even though I'm in slow motion, because I won't go. I'll go. I'll like tap, tap, and I'll like watch. Like I want to see where the other receivers are. Like I yeah, want to see, see what he's seen on the right, all twenty exactly. films. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's a great tool that we have in the nerd the film room here and. You mentioned like JJ, it, he's an interesting prospect because he's very sound. Mm-hmm. And the drum beat in the NFL is this guy's going top twelve in the NFL draft. Like he's going top twelve, so he's getting a big bump in the the super flex. So even where everybody's saying, "Oh, top seven, top seven, it's really top eight because you got to throw JJ McCarthy and every goes top twelve. 
Where's Dun- where is Denver picking? Twelve. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he's not going. I don't think he'd get past them, right? He's not going to pass them. I I, I think some team's going to end up moving up. I, yeah, I think personally. that's like the as far as he's going to go. That's his. He's not getting past. Min- he's not getting past Minnesota. Right. He's not getting past Denver. Like some team's going to jump. Minnesota's one of those got teams. a high pick also, right? Yeah, like eleven. Yeah. So some, I'm thinking one of those teams sure. is going to move up. The problem is Denver has no ammo to move up. Minnesota uh, does. R- real quick, a uh, really interesting uh, quote from uh, Ben Solik, who uh, does a lot of awesome stuff for the Ringer. He was from the Draft Network. Really always plugged into a lot of the stuff. He was at the Combine, and he had this little blip in one of his articles that I thought was really interesting, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it real fast. It says, J.J. McCarthy may be QB3. He said, it's smokescreen season, and I very well might be getting hooked by it. But in Indianapolis, I heard significantly more interest and excitement for how high Michigan quarterback J.J. McCarthy might go relative to how high LSU quarterback Jaden Daniels might go. My sense is that Daniels is not locked into an early draft slot, and the league has turned its attention elsewhere. McCarthy is a strong candidate to go before Daniels in April. Now, take that for what it's worth. It's one report. But it sounds like the league is very high on McCarthy yeah. and I would not be shocked if he does end up finding himself top 10 draft capital just because the traits are so solid. I would love to see him in a, like, a sh- like we made it to Denver, Denver can smile game like in Sean Payton's offense. Like I would love that. Yeah. The whole I would team's see, such a mess. Though. That's the to, hard part. I would love to see Kevin O'Connell work with um, JJ McCarthy in Minnesota. I think with, both of those would be those. nice. Fits. It'd be really nice. Yeah, and I agree. I have somebody else I want with Kevin O'Connell, but we'll get to him. Okay. And, you know, what's nice about J.J. McCarthy is, you're right, when you watch the tape, like, he's not going to blow you away, right? Like, he's not going to sit there and go, wow, look at that throw. Like, Michael Penix will blow you away with some of his throws. But that dude, Jane Daniel, but this dude yeah. makes plays when he's at, when he needs to, when the game is on the line, he's making plays. Man. Every game you watch of him, every game, there's at least one throw that he makes, and you're like, wow, that was nice. Yeah. No, th- that was like one of my notes. He's a bona fide playmaker. Things just seem to happen. Yeah. No doubt about it, man. I mean, I've watched him just stab my heart out and just rip it out of my chest and throw it on the ground and stomp it on against Ohio State. Like he, and some of those throws, even against Ohio State, I'm so like, lucky. That's the thing. Like some of them, I'm like, Dude. was that luck or was that skill? <laughs> because had the DB been paying attention, picked it off, picked it off. Did that one play? Went yes, between them? I yes. Was like, uh, like I how did he miss cousin. that? So like, there are plays like that that I'm like. Did he know, <laughs> or was that he luck? Got, he got hit I as don't as he threw know it. which one it is entirely. Hey, sometimes some dudes just have a rabbit up their ass, so, <laughs> or a rabbit's foot. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> just a whole or rabbit. rabbit. I mean, dang, man, <laughs> some, hey, some guys have a moose up there. <laughs> we don't know. Why is that a brown bunny? Uh, <laughs> Does make any sense? Uh, um, you know, I mean, JJ. I mean, he's got you know, like he's not like he doesn't have the strongest arm. You know, like he can get a little. Hey, he th- he he threw sixty one miles per hour. I think hour. he can make any. But, oh, any it's of the it's a good arm. It's a good combine. Yeah. And their combine record was sixty two miles per hour. Yeah, I think uh, he's Joe, which Joe Milton threw, right? He threw at sixty two. Did he? I think he did. Okay. Yeah, Joe Joe oh, Milton. Oh, Joe Milton's got a good arm. He's got a cannon. That's about Doesn't it. Doesn't know what to That's do with about it. it. But Jarmarcus Russell two point <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but worse. We'll talk. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. Spoilers. Oscar's got to sit on something. So, yeah, I mean, J.J. McCarthy, when we were talking about, like, we were talking about earlier in the show, like, oh, some really good value when you get, like, Roma Dunze. J.J. McCarthy, if you're in a super flex league, talk about a year where you could potentially, at, when you're sitting at pick 1-8, yeah. get a quarterback. Like, what a value. To the point of, like, if I'm at one twelve, And he might slide just due to the, the fact that he didn't. There, Somebody that doesn't watch a film is going to go, look, at he doesn't do anything. With he will the, in our home Like leagues. He, bar- he barely yeah. scores any touched. Like 22 touchdowns, four, four interceptions, not even 3,000 yards last year. Like, he'll, where are the stats? He'll fall. He'll yeah. fall. It, and, like, right. I would be pretty aggressive if I need remotely. I would be, even if I didn't even need a quarterback. Like, there's so many times you don't have the opportunity to get that guy. It's kind of like the Justin Herbert year. Like, I was super aggressive moving up to six, seven, yeah. in that eight range to get Justin Herbert because he was falling kind of like that. So, I, I was real aggressive that year. If I had a pick where I was pick one twelve and I can get to one eight and I, I could, I'd figure out a way what I had to get up to get a guy like JJ McCarthy because I'd rather gamble on him than gamble on a guy like Brian Thomas. Even I, and I love Lad McConkey, like love him, but like even there, like if I have an opportunity to get a quarterback like this and have that kind of draft capital, like I'm making that move. And to me, he's sound, and it's kind of hard to pick apart his game when he doesn't have that much to pick apart. Well, and one thing that I would kind of like to see personally. I would like to see him go to a situation where he doesn't have to start right away. He he is one of those kind of guys that I think he would benefit from 
sitting a year and just being able, because he seems like a real smart kid, absorb a lot of information before he's taken a lot of those hits. I think that would be the most beneficial thing for him. Now, depending on the team, they might not have that luxury. They, they, they have might that. have to throw him out there right away. Yeah. But I would love it to be a Jordan Love situation, a Pat Mahomes situation, an Aaron Rodgers situation. I don't I, think that's happening. That's, that's what I would like to see. But a team that could go that route, the New York Giants. The New York Giants would make perfect sense. Let Daniel Jones take his lumps for the year and then and then tread out McCarthy. But Let him uh, get killed. Yeah. That, that, that would make sense, but then he's on a team that has a bad offensive line and no weapons to throw to, and that w- I don't think that would help him at all either. So it, it will be interesting, but I think mm-hmm. I think if there's one somebody who's that, that young that can handle that, like I think he could handle that. You know, he's a national champion, mm-hmm. went to a Big Ten school, had a, had an NFL head coach. Like I think right. he, I think he's in a spot. Like I feel that way about Drake May. For example, like I, feel, I would love to see like Ten. Drake May go to New England and they sign Jacoby Brissett and he sits behind Jacoby Brissett for oh, six. See, seven, I'd rather McCarthy games. sit than than May. See, sit that, those were the two guys that before I don't even know if I said it on this podcast, but those are the two guys I had in mind that I'd like to see sit for a year or even. And they're two. the youngest ones of the group that could afford to. Yeah. All the other guys are twenty four, and you don't want them sitting too long, <clears throat> right? So uh, we're good then, right? We're good. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Jared, you got anything? Anybody else got Matt? You got anything on JJ? Uh, no, we nailed everything. I, I'm not going to repeat the fact that I think he's super fundamentally sound because he is. But I, 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 that's why I added the stuff about the, him being a playmaker and and kind of having that ice in his veins, which which I think is an important thing to note. You know yeah. What I mean, he, so I don't have anything else to add. Guys, I got to tell you about my friends at Underdog fantasy right now they have the pre nfl draft 2024 best ball is live on underdog draft your favorite rookie sleepers you've discovered in the dynasty nerds film room playing three dollar contest all the way up to thousand dollar contest draft your team and never worry about setting a lineup you need to get in on this action asap sign up at underdog with the promo code nerds and underdog will double your first deposit up to a hundred dollars for new members only and yes, Dynasty Nerds is still giving new users a free Nerd Herd and Dynasty GM annual bundle membership with your deposit of $10 or more at Underdog by using that promo code NERD. So you get all our tools, all access to the Nerd Herd by putting a $10 deposit down in there. Your Dynasty Nerds promo code will be sent by email within 48 hours of sign up. New members only. Must be 18 plus, 19 plus in Alabama and Nebraska, 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concerned with your play, call 1 800 Gambler, visit www.ncpgambling.org. In Arizona, call 1 800 Next Step. In New York, call 1 877 Hope New York. In Tennessee, 1 800 889 9789. All right, next. All right, so next guy up is Bo Nix, quarterback, uh, Oregon, 6'2, 214 pounds, 10 and 1 8 inch hands. 31 and 7 8 inch arms. He is 24 years old. He'll be 25. He just turned 24. So it, it, that was February 25th. So he'll be 25 next February. Yeah, he's 24. Yep. Didn't do anything in the drills, though. So don't have anything. Big hands. Big hands. 10, 10 and 1 8 inch. Dude, what, what's crazy about Bo Nix is he's a five year starter. Yep. So he started his career at or, uh, Auburn. 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 Yep. Auburn, yep. And just. Was a five yeah. star there as well. Yep. Yeah. A and, and I think it went like nine and four. I think his, his first year was like, okay. And then just got like beat up and then went to Oregon and kind of really thrived there in Oregon. And he played three years at Auburn before, before he transferred to Oregon. So for me, what's good about Bo Nix. Let me see. Um, he, he seems like he's athletic, but he doesn't really run that much. Uh, you know, he, he obviously has a better, you know, read on defenses because he's been playing so long. And <laughs> it's gonna be one of these kind of evals. And huh? it's um <laughs> I, I think I think he processes fairly quickly. He he does process. Um he he, he can go in there and he avoids sacks, he can, he can move in the pocket. He and does avoid sacks well. Here's okay, here's the best thing I can say about Bo Nix. If Bo Nix ends up being good in the NFL, it would not surprise me. It would surprise me. If Bo Nix was bad, I'd understand. Yeah. Here's the thing with him, like I got, I got so bored watching his tape. <laughs> you don't like screens and slants because everything he threw, it's all, it's all to the outside. Was it the line it's, of scrimmage? It's the, it's the Oregon offense. Every single throw. I, at one point, I was like six minutes into watching this game tape, and I'm like, this dude has not thrown a ball past five yards 
yet. Like, this is unbelievable. Yeah. It's either at or behind the line of scrimmage. 30%. Or it's five yards out. 30% were behind the line of scrimmage. 30%? 30% of his throws were behind that, the line of scrimmage. And that is a lot. It, it, it totally is. So, like, for me, it's just kind of like... It makes it makes hard to it makes it hard to evaluate because you don't know how much of that is him, how much of it's just that offense, and that's how they do it. They want to spread you out, sideline to sideline. Let's get everyone moving all over the place. But, but even if, when he, even when he moved out of the pocket, like from pressure, it's kind of like it's it like he. I felt like he still wasn't even looking downfield. He's like looking to like, but but who's Matt, closest to me? We we had a conversation before sure. before this, and Matt was telling me about all the guys he didn't like. And then he talked pretty glowingly about Bo Nix. I wouldn't say glowingly. There's some things okay, that he does Okay, compared to what I right. thought, it was yeah. glowing. <laughs> so so I, I do feel like he moves well within the pocket. I think okay. he's got yes. nice hips that that he Shakira, knows how to, Shakira. He knows how to get a snap, flip his hips, make a throw. Some of you these have guys, to on screens. Some, yeah. some of these guys don't have the movement skills to even do that kind of stuff. And I did see him do that quite a bit. He almost looks like a short 30% stop. of the time. He almost looks like a shortstop grabbing it, flipping his hips, throw to second base or turn two, <laughs> however you want to see that. <laughs> so I, I think he's got some stuff that he can do. Yes, a lot of that stuff is close to the line of scrimmage, so it's hard to tell. And when he's off schedule or he doesn't have his feet underneath him to make a throw, it's an inaccurate throw. So he does have some in, inconsistencies there. He doesn't have a cannon of an arm, right? No. We, we, we're never, we're never going to see him throw the ball 70 yards downfield and be like, oh, I my I think gosh. for most guys that you would expect to go in the first or second round, I think it's below what you would typically expect of those players. Yeah. No, so that, I see this guy as mostly like a – almost like an Andy Dolphin type, right? Where <laughs> he's probably going to go high second round. Hopefully, you know, he'll be able to mature and kind of sit on the bench. Not too long because he's 24, <laughs> but maybe for a year. And then see what you have. See if he can develop into a guy that that can be a short term answer. Yeah. I don't think he's a, he's never going to be a ten year starter or anything like that. But I, I think he can be one of those guys that is a QB two for a window. This is the guy who, when you said before, like JJ McCarthy the Giants. This is the guy I think that would be good for the Giants. Like if you want if you want to bring another quarterback in, you take him in the second round at pick two oh six. You take Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze with the, you give Daniel Jones some help, trying to help or him out. An offensive lineman. You get offensive lineman. <laughs> Anything on something. offense. God, please. And then you take a guy like Bo Nix, and you hope, like, okay, if Daniel Jones doesn't work out, at least we have something here to kind of play with, you know? So, it, and I kind of gave him away a little disappointed, too, where, like, you mentioned, like, he does have those hips. He, he is really good in pocket. He moves really well. But once he has to, like, get past the line of scrimmage, like, his run ability was kind of, like, yeah. He did have 500 yards last year, but yeah, I agree. He's only 234 this past season. Just so a gamer, you yeah. know, like yeah. he'll get what he needs to. But yeah. nothing crazy. Like no. it wasn't like it's like, dude, you slid too early there, or like yeah, that was yeah. very like unathletic that run. It, it was just weird, like because I I expected, I was like, oh, I bet this guy could probably move pretty well, like in open field. Yeah, and it was a complete opposite. I mean, it's kind of like an RPO ish type of offense as well. A lot of stuff and. None of that stuff is going to translate. He's never going to be that guy in the NFL. So he's going to have to find a different way to win. And it's going to be mostly short to intermediate stuff. I mean, we saw other people do this kind of stuff. I mean, I'm thinking of Phillip Rivers when he first came into the league. This was kind of the offense he ran at NC State, and he came in and succeeded. Yeah, He was never a guy that had a huge arm either. He could get the ball downfield. It was like this big old rainbow of a throw. Sure. Um, And and I think that's a good – differentiation to make is when we talk about arm strength versus like velocity, they're not necessarily always the same thing. Like the be able the ability to be able to complete a long pass, you don't have to have an incredibly strong arm to create a long pass. It's it's all about the angles of things and, sure. yeah. and the arc that you're putting on it. It's like that. Whereas quick throws over the middle, you got to be able to like really rocket it in there or throws to the sidelines, you have to be able to put those on a rope. So that way the DB. So like I think that's the difference. I think he can make some of the deep throws, but as far as those outs that need to be on a rope, yeah. or like the stuff from over, one hash all the way to the far side, right? Like yeah. those types of throws. I don't know that he has the velocity, the arm strength there to make a lot of those throws, which I think a lot of NFL teams are wanting. And, and you mentioned he's an older prospect. It just I'm whelmed with him. You listen, know what I mean? Listen, it's, guys, it's, guys, it's okay. You like this QB class way more than me. All right. I think a lot of these guys have got Which warts. is why you picked this guy. That's why I'm so confused. I don't have 
if you saw my ranks, it's not like I have him above the other guys. He's my quarterback. Six. You guys just don't like him He's at all. Six and a half. Where do me. you have him, Matt? Uh, I I have him five. No, I've got two guys at five. So six. So six. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm six too. So we're yeah. at the same spot. Okay. So I think I think it was just overblown how much you think I like them. I just don't like any of these guys. A ton. <laughs> <laughs> so I just had one nice thing to say about Bo Nix, and you think I like love him. It's great because I, I love Caleb Williams. I like J.J. McCarthy. And uh-huh. I'm, I'm okay on uh I love Bo Caleb. Nix. I like McCarthy. I, I don't understand the, the Bo Nix hype. I don't get it. What do you think of Bo, Nix, Bo Nix, Jared? Um, I have a tough time seeing how he would be a successful starter at any point in his yeah. career. Uh, I think – He's kind of like a dime a dozen type quarterback where he he did pretty well in college. Um, I mean, we saw that Max Dugan guy from TCU last year. He kind of reminds me of, of like how that guy plays. You know, he's a fiery college quarterback that can do what he needs to do to win, and he's a good leader, it seems. But as far as working through progressions or like just being an elite athlete or something, like he just doesn't really have that. He doesn't really have the elite arm talent. I think we that's a good point, Jared. Like, I just don't know how he wins. Like, yeah. how does he win at the next level? Like, he doesn't have that thing that he can win at. That cool name. That helps. He does. Yeah. Bo Nix. Yeah. But, it doesn't um, take long to spell either, which great is Great season for him, too. I mean. It won't be hard to forget then either. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I, I, I even have a tough time seeing how he's going to go in the second round. Like, we usually see these guys, if they don't I'm go kind in of the, the first round, spot. they end up going in, like, third or fourth round. Uh-huh. Um, but I, I was whelmed watching yeah. his tape. I just, I really was. But I was like, if I got to, like co- him compared to the rest of the guys below him, like, okay, I'll gamble on him. Like, yeah. sure. In a super flex league, like, I'd be happy to take him in, like, the third round of my rookie draft. Yeah, I Cause agree. Because uh, at that point, I'm taking all the running backs and receivers in the second round. I can see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it depends on where he gets drafted. If for some reason some team falls in love with him and he does go as pick 31 in the draft, which I'm not even sure who's at 31. Say he goes so. to the Giants in round two. See, that's... Uh, maybe late second round, but yeah, if he's if he's a first round quarterback, I'm gonna take him in the second round. To be Daniel Jones' backup for the next five years, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Jones gonna have a career resurgence somewhere else. He will for sure, I believe. <laughs> that team's so crappy behind him. We're like what the UFL thing, right? career resurgence. <laughs> Somewhere how dare, how you, said you. Somewhere says, you said somewhere else. Says you said somewhere. You left it open ended. <laughs> True story. <laughs> hey guys, let me tell you about our friends at Sleeper. Guess. What our app is, the mini is live Woo. on Sleeper right now. The Dynasty so GM, pretty. you can use the analyzer, that you can use nice. the, uh, the the trade calculator. And my favorite thing is the inbox, right? Where all your trades from all your Sleeper leagues are right there. You can actually push trades through the actual Sleeper app. And right now, we could be more excited to be partners with them. And right now, if you don't know, they are doing DFS. And I know how many people that play Dynasty play DFS as well. And right now, there's not a better place to play DFS than sleeper they're offering up to a hundred times their your entry the highest payout in the whole dfs market right now you can track your fantasy players and your sleeper picks in real time all you gotta do is choose two to eight of your favorite players from pregame live in game or even across different sports pick more or less than the predicted stats and only on sleeper you can get up to a hundred times your payout you can share with your friends and get rewarded together make sure you use that promo code nerd so our friends know that friends sent them their way um, <laughs> and get your deposit match and have Lindsay. a good time. You know, have all your DFS, all of your fantasy leagues. And now even a dynasty gem in one spot is fully operational inside sleeper right now. And then when you're a nerd herd member, you get that full access to that. And remember, Dyn- you also want to download the dynasty Nerds app because they're both in there. Check it out. Check our friend sleeper, check out a DFS, use that promo code nerd. Get your whole estate. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Next. All right. Jordan Travis, uh, FSU quarterback, six foot one, 200 pounds, nine inch hands, 31 and three eighths inch arms. He is 23 years old. He'll be 24 in like a month and a half, two months. Yeah. He had a booboo, right? Uh, yeah. What was the injury? Uh, uh, broken, th- broken leg. I think it was actually his ankle. Though, yeah. I believe it's nothing, nothing ACL or crazy like that. I knew ACL. Uh, yeah, so Jordan Travis, really interesting prospect. Uh, you mentioned six foot one, so he's not. I think I said six foot. 
Or no, I just it is six one. Two hundred. I think he said six one. <laughs> the zeros are in the two hundred. <laughs> in the wrong spot. Two hundred. Uh, uh so it was it was a pretty gross injury. And it was a fascinating story because Florida State was an undefeated team mm-hmm. during the regular season. And he gets hurt towards the end of the season there. And they're supposed to, you know, if you're an undefeated team, you should be going to, you know, one of the the championship games, one of the the top the bowl, four teams. Yep, yep. They were left out. They were very much so offended, and then they got rolled by Georgia by like fifty points. Uh, but it just showed what how different this team was without Jordan Travis at the helm, and he had a really interesting uh, path here. He was another guy that ended up transferring to get here, and by his build, he does have more of a running back slash wide receiver type of build. And in fact, during his time at FSU. Before uh, Mike Norvell came there, they were actually talking about tr- switching him mm-hmm. to wide receiver as opposed to quarterback. Norvell said, "No, we're going to stick with him. I think he's I think he's a good quarterback." He ended up having really really productive uh, college career. Was uh, Norvell was this past season, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, he was there two years. He's 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 still he's there. gone now. Norvell, right? No, he, he's still no, there. he's still there. Yeah, okay. Was um, it just the 23 season or 22 and 23? No, he came in in 2021, I believe. Oh, okay. And, okay. and kept him at quarterback. Gotcha. Uh, instead of switching him over to wide receiver. But past two seasons is where he really started to thrive. And obviously, he's an older quarterback as well. Uh, but he put up 24 touchdowns, only five interceptions to those those 24 touchdowns in 2022. And then he followed it up this year very much so the same. Obviously, a few less games because of the injury. But 20 touchdowns to only two interceptions on the season would have eclipsed, you know, probably 25, 26 had, had he been able to keep going. Uh, but a little bit less, uh, two, 2,756 yards this past year. So there were, there were a lot of things on tape that I actually really liked in his game. Yeah. I think he was, a, he was a, obviously a very good athlete. Uh, he was a fairly accurate quarterback, made some good decisions, struggled with true arm strength. I don't think he had that. I think downfield was was hard on for, yeah. for him. Uh, yeah, he, he was definitely but a guy that. Good zip intermediate. Yeah, yeah I agree. He, he He's had, a baseball player. Yep. Former baseball player. So uh, there was a lot to like in his game. The problem now is going to be where I could have seen him being a potential third-round pick as a developmental guy, end of day two, a guy that we kind of like. The problem now is with this injury – it could potentially hinder one of the biggest aspects of his game, which was his athletic ability, the ability to be able to move around, do things. And then the team's also going to have to wait, and how long is this recovery time and all that kind of stuff. So I think now he slips into day three, unfortunately, as a fifth round, sixth round type of guy. So that is a bummer. But if there's somebody that had the mental makeup, the mentality to be able to do it. He overcame a lot, got this team as an undefeated team, really brought FSU back from being kind of a dumpster fire since Jameis Winston and really led them back into relevance at a big-time program. There was a lot that I really liked there with Jordan Travis, but I I, I do worry after this injury how far is this going to knock him down draft. Yeah, from having such a gruesome injury. I actually... I didn't mind this team either. I thought he got in his. I thought. I, th- I thought he did his three step drop quicker than anybody else. Like he was just yeah. boom, got back real mm-hmm. quick, got the ball out, had some good zip on the ball. So the fact that he said he's a baseball player kind of makes sense there. I know Matt, you said like his deep ball accuracy was kind of, uh, and I can see that too. Even though they didn't really push the ball down too field, and if it did, not, it was a Keon, Keon Coleman for jump ball situation. Yeah. yeah, jump ball situation. Um, and with him, I like I, the the first thing that popped out I was like, wow, he gets he gets in his three-step drop so quick, like faster than anybody else I, I saw there. And then he got get some good zip, some good mobility. Um, he was able to, like, work the pocket well and still step up and keep his eyes downfield. Like, I thought he was, I thought he played pretty well mm-hmm. uh, overall. I mean, I thought at times it looked like he was going through his reads a little bit, like, slower than I would have, uh, like, liked, I guess. But overall, like, I thought, like, this guy has the makeup of a really solid number two quarterback in the NFL that could be, like, Hey, I wouldn't mind to give him my strip flex leagues like later in the draft. And like if he gets an opportunity, like I feel like he could produce. Like mm-hmm. he could score me some fantasy points. Um, but like you mentioned that leg injury does kind of does kind of hurt him a little bit. He, he he's now back. somebody that I think will be available more in your fourth rounds or so of your of your drafts. And he will be a guy that I'll be drafting quite a bit in case he does come back because you put him in a West Coast scheme and he can yeah. get the ball out quick. RPO. I think he's accurate. Like I think there's a at least a path where there's a lot of guys where you're like, 
I don't see the path, and we'll talk about a couple of them. But uh, I think for him, there's at least a path. He said, he's on my board. He said his lower leg broke into about 100 pieces. Ooh. 100 pieces? Yeah. That's crazy. So never mind about my, that's, that's not uh, as bad as an ACLE type of injury. That sounds pretty gruesome. I didn't per, realize uh, it was that bad. Tallahassee.com <laughs> news report. That's like you're, you got plates, you got screws. Yeah, well, you got somebody throw a grenade at him? It was that bad? I know it was 100 pieces. It was a ugly injury. That I remember hearing it was gruesome, but yeah, I didn't hear it was um, that many. One of those, but yeah, it was his lower leg, ankle. So, so uh, injury aside, which I, none of us know what the outcome of that is healing process is going to be right he he does everything fine he does everything pretty well you know what i mean yeah. like uh, and and i can see why you guys are hey i like this guy he maybe have, maybe has a shot um at, at becoming so i i'm becoming somebody i'm probably closer to where you are where i think he's probably going to be ceiling at like a number two quarterback yeah um not really for a for a football team, is that what you were talking about? Yeah, like, for a football like a team, not, yeah, yeah, not yeah. a QB two, a yeah. quarterback two on an NFL team. Yeah, that's that how that's how I see him. I'd it, want a roster because of his youth, just to have. Yeah. on my team. And, and the guy that I was I w- when I was watching him, who I was seeing like from an NFL comp perspective, it was like a PJ Walker type, almost like him or a Troy Smith type of guy who who's a little bit farther back of a comp, but guys more that, zip though. Guys that Troy Smith had. Plenty of zip on the ball. Then PJ Walker. Yeah, yeah. PJ that's Walker what. That's sucks. why. That's why he was like somewhere in between those two guys for me. You know what I mean? Because um, I feel like he moves around well enough, like PJ Walker does. PJ Walker can get out and move and, and avoid pressure and all that kind of good stuff. He can't throw a football. He can't throw a football very well, but Troy Smith could. Um, which is where I kind of got this mashup in my brain of those two guys. Um, but I'm just I'm just not sure. There's a ton of upside there. As no. far as if he got a job, would he keep it? I, d- I don't know that he's ever going to keep a job longer than a four or five game stretch, and then they're going to see the warts and then kind of you know move on and try to figure something else out for the future. Could so, he be like a Gardner Minshew, you know, along those lines? I absolutely I think so. You think he? Yeah, I yeah. think I think there's a ceiling. You know, what okay. I mean, like somebody comes in there and like he has the right tools running like, Oh wow. He looked pretty good. And then like, but he's just started a long-term like, Oh, this isn't going to work out. Tyrod Taylor, I think. All right. Actually guys. So it was not him that broke his leg into a hundred pieces. It was a, a kid that was there to see him that day of his injury. When he broke his leg, when he broke his leg, <laughs> <I don't mean. laughs> oh, and that a, kid's I leg had broken leg into a hundred pieces. pieces. So I'm sorry. I misread that, um, Okay, but it was a lower leg and ankle injury and it was disgusting. So, Okay. Um, so still bad, bad, but not yeah. 100 pieces. Yeah. yeah. The whole know, time, when like, I read how that, how is that even possible? Dude, like, I know. Without a like, grenade. <laughs> okay. How is he going to walk <laughs> again, <laughs> let alone play football? Yeah, in my head, I'm like, they should probably just cut it off and like put a <laughs> rod in there. Like, how you can't put that back together? I'm like, no, I'm literally thinking of like an eggshell. <laughs> like, that. how do you put that back together? Uh, that's yeah. funny. Yeah, get back in your garbage can. <laughs> <laughs> get back in your garbage can there. I do like Jordan Travis, though. As far as like anybody that you would be, that's probably a late round pick. Uh, if he's available on waivers, like after my rookie draft, that was a guy that I would, I would look to add to my taxi squad if you're able to do that, um, or throw a waiver claim in. See, um, I'm I'm taking him those. over like random receivers that I know are always going to be my eighth wide receiver on my team. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like just just because of the positional value, like I'll take him in the fourth, fifth round all day. Yeah, he's on my board. I'm drafting him like for sure. Like I'll have like. He's one of these quarterbacks I have circled. Like, okay, I'm going to get a share of him just to have. And let's say this this the medicals come back pretty bad. He goes undrafted. You guys still? Oh, that, no, no, that, that, could, that would change everything. Okay. Yeah, because right. I think he's a talented enough guy. Like I said, had there been no medical issues, I think he might have been around three guy. And we like I might have ended up like just based on the tape, I liked him just as just as much, if not maybe more than Bo Nix personally. Like, yeah, that's how I felt. I, I don't I don't see a huge difference between those two guys. So. If the injury never happened, then I would have been very interested in him. But the injury does plague things a little bit, and now I think he's going to be it day moved, three. Guy. It moved him down a couple spots. For me. Like I, I had in my overall rankings, I had uh, Spencer Rattler ranked ahead of him, mm-hmm. and then Larry ranked a little bit ahead of him. But to be fair, Larry and him are in the same exact tier, essentially. Sure. But like only because of the injury. If he didn't have the injury, you're right. I'm putting him up there right behind like that Bo Nix. Right. And if the draft capital is there, then I like his ability more because – he offers to me more fantasy football upside. Yeah. So Jordan Travis should be on everybody's board and definitely add him in Superflex links. All right. So moving on to the next old prospect, <laughs> we have got <laughs> another one. <laughs> another one. One of the oldest. Uh, 
Sam Hartman. Best no, hair, though. Notre Dame. He does have some flowing locks. I can't unsee the um, – somebody – I can't remember who did it, and I can't even remember who the old singer is now. <laughs> it was from, like, the 70s. Dang it, I will think of it. The Bee Gees? Okay. No, but he probably – he looks like he belongs in the Bee Gees. It might be Kenny Rogers when he was young. Ooh, young <laughs> Kenny. I think it was Kenny Rogers. Um, I can't unsee it, though, now, the comparison between the two. Anyway, Sam Hartman. Notre I can't Dame. unsee it. I have no idea who I'm talking about. <laughs> but, I do, but, I, but I can't see it, though. I can see <laughs> the picture is there. The name of the <laughs> singer is not within my brain. I got too much stuff jammed in here. Man. I remember it like one. it was yesterday. It was a Tuesday. <laughs> or, was or was it, it a Wednesday? Wednesday? <laughs> six, six, one, two, eleven, nine and three quarters inch hands. <laughs> Whew, 31 and three inch. inch Three, 31 and three eighths inch arms, 24 years old. He'll be 25 in, in July. July. <laughs> 25. Grandpa Sam. Grandpa Sam. He wore, he ran a four, eight in the 40. He had a, a short shuttle, a 20 yard shuttle of 4.34, a three cone of 7.19. He did the broad jump under nine inches and he did a vertical and I can't see what it is because my spreadsheet won't let me. Uh, his vertical jump was 28 and a half. Not great. Not great. <laughs> Very pedestrian. Kind of a, uh, you know, kind Sounds of like mimics me. his game. <laughs> I bet you Rich could jump 28 and a half inches. I proved that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I jumped 18 inches. <laughs> with, the, yeah. with the toes, baby. <laughs> Plenty toes. 18 inches in jeans <laughs> right after work. No stretching. <laughs> no I am Mr. Vert. <laughs> Just know it. Captain Vert. Well, oh, somebody made me that uh, slogan I want to put on a shirt, that logo. It said Air Dotson. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sweet. <laughs> I still so have it saved on my phone somewhere. Oh man! But uh, he, he ran some drills. He yeah. did. I, I he, ran, he ran all I, the numbers. I said the oh, numbers. Yeah. Right. <laughs> He'll be on TV. That's someday. how we got to the vertical number. <laughs> He'll be sitting next to Brady Quinn. Good looking guy. Yeah. All right, go ahead, Rich. What do you think? Oh, I think he sucks. <laughs> 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 Sorry. I mean, he's just somebody that um, <laughs> isn't good. <sighs> he's not an NFL quarterback. He's he's unfortunately I, not. Yeah, I just don't see it, man. I mean. Too many turnovers. Um, his decision making wasn't really there. Uh, didn't really like look anybody off anywhere. Um, doesn't have a great arm. No, um, not a, especially on the arm. So miles per hour, they they tested the quarterback's miles per hour, uh, and you know how Jared was talking about guys at you know sixty and sixty one and real strong arms. Uh, you know even Devin Leary, 60, 60 miles an hour, pretty solid. Uh, McCarthy sixty one. Sam Hartman, fifty three, so like not even in the same. And it shows ballpark. on tape, like it just it, it's like yeah, yeah, like a lazy ball essentially. Like it's just it's just not there. There's, and I know, that, and I, listen, I don't like to come out here and say like these kids, like these kids are going out to chase their dreams and stuff. And this is never personal. This is all for dynasty we, fantasy yeah. football perspective. This is nothing ever from a personal standpoint. I don't mean anything like that. But like I'm gonna call it like I see it at the same time. And I don't think this kid has any chance whatsoever to even be a backup quarterback in the NFL. Like he's not even on my board. Um, he he throw. You want to say okay? You know what? He he throws a catchable ball. Nice, <laughs> nice soft catchable ball. Nice Coming soft in. catchable ball. Um, Coming in. He, he can move. Like he he can move. I thought he like, does. Uh, he does a nice job of sidestepping some stuff that's around him. Some he, trash. In the yeah, pocket he does well in the pocket. Stuff. Yeah, he, yeah. He manages the pocket well. Yeah. The man just talking about. Besides that, like I don't see anything that like I couldn't turn. I couldn't stop watching his tape fast enough. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, there, there's always those guys where you're like, okay, I've seen enough. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And sometimes it is like you see, you can watch two things and be like, two games and be like, I don't need to watch another game. Like this guy is no yeah. future. And, and 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 what are we all chasing when you when you're looking at these rookies and you're listening to these shows and you're looking at other people's articles like. We're not NFL teams. We're chasing points. Right. We're chasing fantasy football points. And at some point, you see a player, and you're like, this guy doesn't even offer a roster spot of any upside of fantasy football points. Like, that's what we're looking for. Like, same thing. When we talk about Caleb Williams, like, yeah, for NFL team, he's a clear 1-1. One, one. But when you're looking for fantasy points, there's another guy that offers a whole other upside of fantasy football potential, kind of like Anthony Richardson last year, too. So when you walk a guy like Sam Hartman, you're like, oh, where no. are the points coming from? When I watch Gluteus Minimus, I'm like, hey, this is a nice young college player. I'm sorry. He doesn't offer any NFL fantasy football production upside at all. Time will tell on that one. I, I, we still got a couple seasons left, now, I think, of Gluteus Minimus. To be fair, <laughs> I did say the same thing about Tank Dell. Yeah. 
I did say that. Gluteus minimus, minimus did have like a 100-yard game on like a week 18. One of these yeah, you wrote him off because of his size. Yeah. But sometimes I'm wrong. But yeah. for the most part, listen, if you play poker, you'll win hands with 7-2. It will happen. But guess what? Most of the time, you're going to lose your money. And if you want to gamble on 7-2 more than others, go ahead. I'm not going to do that. It's fun. And this guy is 7-2, off suit. Do 7. Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> nice, yeah. hair. nice hair, though. Nice it's hair. Got flow. Yeah. Got some flow. I, I don't have a lot to add to this. I was very underwhelmed uh, watching his tape. He he jumped around. He was at Wake Forest and then went to Notre Dame and – he was on Netflix when he was in high school. Yeah, that was, that was cool. Like sometimes, like like what, what happens if somebody says, yeah, "Oh, there's a the, the quarterback quarterback show." show. Oh. Justin Fields was on it. Got Sam it. Hartman. Oh yeah, yeah, some yeah. Other, yeah. Yeah. So that was it. Was cool to like see him progress into yeah. going to another. Like if somebody said to you, success. like, "What's the number one thing you say to somebody who's like, oh, dude, my stomach hurts real bad." Like, oh, what do you say? You gotta poop. You could be like, "Hey, you got a Sam Hartman." <laughs> <laughs> Same <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so m- moving on. <laughs> Last two. <laughs> Work with jokes, too, man. <laughs> <laughs> Work with jokes. M- moving on. Speaking of D7. Oh! <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> you said that, that was always, like, my favorite uh, favorite hand to, like, try to win in on poker, just for the fun of it. See? Just mm-hmm. broke ass. The <laughs> 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 they're, they're never going to see this coming. <laughs> I'm going to win with D7. Oh, <laughs> it's like rookie of the year putting that kid on the mountain. Like they're never going to see this coming. <laughs> Next, That's a great movie. Devin Leary, Kentucky quarterback, six one, two fifteen. Are, are all these people six one, two hundred fifteen pounds? A lot of them are. Uh, nine and one half inches on the hands, thirty and seven eighths <laughs> inch arms. He is also twenty four. He will be twenty five in September. He didn't do any of the uh, athletic drills. Probably a smart move. Rich, it sounds like you like this guy. He, he did. Uh, <laughs> he did. He did throw the football. He did for sure. for the miles per hour. Yeah. He, he hit sixty. I thought he had a pretty good arm. So he, he does. He he's he's got solid zip on his ball. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was one of these another one of these guys that transferred. Uh, he he was originally Started at NC State. NC State yep. Went 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 to Kentucky and uh, he he had a really good twenty twenty one season, but then kind of after that everything just kind of was man. Got well, worse. It got got worse. And while he's he's a fine player and a fine athlete, there's there's nothing in his game that would point to necessarily having long term success. But forty eight point one percent completion percentage. Yeah, his first year sixty sixty five. His third sixty one. 56. And, and, and it seemed like, despite having the stronger arm, it seemed like he managed the things within 10 to 15 yards real well. But the down the field, it seemed like he, he didn't. I feel like it didn't do well with that. Down the field, outside I didn't know the numbers, what to, not I, so great. I didn't know what to expect, throw in, throw out. I, sure. He was very scattered. He was erratic. For me. I, I don't know. He's a hard one to evaluate. Uh, and, and He didn't wrote, seem completely inept. I wrote Dr. Jekyll... And Mr. Hyde, you know, I don't remember which one's the bad one. He's more bad. Mr. Hyde, I think. is. The Mr. Bad he's one. more Mr. Hyde then than Dr. Jekyll. Um, but every once in a while, he'll make a, a perfect throw. And you're like, look at looked, you, Dr. Jekyll. That looked fantastic. Dr. Doctor, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> when I put out my rankings this, this afternoon, when I put them in order, after my fingers crossed, I did have them like 8, 9, 10, and I had Larry in there. But it was like, it was just. It was just a mix. If just somebody can figure and I should have had Travis out, but the injury I should have had. If somebody can figure out yeah. why he's so erratic, I think he could be an okay backup quarterback. Somebody with some upside <laughs> to to do a little bit more. But he, I just I wonder I, what games I watched. I thought it was like okay. He's very like erratic. He offers nothing in the rushing game. He has negative no. rushing yards in a couple of the seasons here, which you know in college they do it differently. So sacks are they count they counted to get account, count against you for rush yards. Um, but he, he, he doesn't offer anything there, so it's all going to be on his arm. Um, so it makes him uh, already a guy that's going to be hard to score points for fantasy. Um, I mean, it looks like a year read defense. Um, and there's a time, like, see, where J.J. McCarthy has, like, <laughs> he's he's pretty, like, good, consistent. Like, this guy, like you said, he has a couple throws. You're like, oh, that's a nice throw. I love when we get to these guys that offers it, yeah. zero fantasy. <laughs> and yeah, it happens like, every year. <laughs> and towards the end, we're like, this guy sucks, this guy sucks, this guy sucks. It's this guy's kind of not well, sucking. It's why they're at the bottom of the list. And here, here's <laughs> the deal. 
I mean, something else goes into this crappy completion percentage is that his wide receivers stay were they, they were doo-doo butter. They were very bad. Hey, don't so, hate on Dane Key and Barry and Brown, bro. So even when – how do you know their names? Debbie. <laughs> Come on, man. Debbie. <laughs> Forget their Talking names. Talking to the freak over here. Forget their names because they were dropping way too many passes. Hey, you'll hear Barry and Brown next year. Okay. Um, he wasn't the guy dropping the passes then? It was the other guy? I don't know. All right. <laughs> it's just it's hard to evaluate when a guy is that erratic and then his wide receivers catching the ball are that inconsistent. It really does make it a kind of a double whammy. So I, I try to kind of eliminate any of those drops and almost see him if the, if just for the pass itself. You know, if, if the pass sure. was good, it hit him in the mark. I count that as a good thing, no matter what the outcome is uh, for this kind of evaluation. Always do. Me too. Yeah. So, I mean, there's probably a little bit better if you watch the tape than just look at the numbers. There's a little bit more good. Drake may have some of that. PFF sure. does a stat where they, they do the adjusted completion percentage for uh, – I can look it up. Okay. But if, if we're still talking He, he about falls in the category <laughs> <laughs> of I want to see his draft capital and I want to see where he goes. Simple as that. Yeah. It, it, he – if he gets some coaching and cleans up his erratic throws, there were some good things that I l- that I like, and I thought, hey, that looks like a he could be a professional quarterback. He's better than Sam Hartman. I agree. Ew. I agree. <laughs> I, he can rifle a ball in there. I, I think he's got a pretty strong live arm. So I, I think this this is um. Yeah, I don't hate him. Yeah, I mean, he's a, for the guy at the bottom of the list. Like I, I was like, oh, because usually the guys at the bottom of our list are like, oh, these are the turds of the Fergs, like. No, it. I mean, honestly, we got through four in this one, and we'll get through another four or five in the next one that are good, like good quarterbacks. So usually by like two or four, three, yeah. usually by two or three through each one in the quarterbacks, we're like, all right, let's just muscle through, you know. But this That's is what's nice pretty about deep. this year. Like this year, like usually for the quarterback show, we're like, okay, all right, I'm come, got- I'm starting to come around, guys. Look at yeah. you, Matt. We just gotta get, we just Maybe. gotta get through this show because this his, is yeah. meaningless. But his, now we're t- we have a lot of guys. His it's adjusted longest. completion percentage was 69. See, we could killed enough time. 10 percent, 69, 10.7 drop percentage. That's, that's pretty high. Uh, that's pretty high. And it looked high on tape. It was yeah. awful. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like he was Josh wasn't, Gordon. I, I felt like his numbers weren't as bad as. They should have been. I mean, now you're right. His deep ball, him throwing outside the numbers isn't as like accurate as you want it to be. But like, I mean, he's not getting any older. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, he is. Real he soon. is getting older. So, on All September right. 10th. Well, that's our first episode of the Rookie Breakdowns. Hey. If you enjoy these shows, make sure you uh, leave a rating review on iTunes so everybody else can find us along. If you are watching on YouTube, make sure that subscribe button and like button. We always appreciate that, too. We do have way more content coming out on YouTube. Garrett's going to be making a lot more YouTube content. Ooh, We're going to be yeah. doing some guest shows on there as well. You can always watch the same film we watch by joining the Nerd Herd. Uh, get on there and jump in our film room and use all our fun tools like the Dynasty GM. And they have so many tools inside that. I love the League Analyzer. So get on there. Jump on the phone. Download the app. Download the app. Jump Download the, phone. the app. <laughs> jump on the phone. Yeah. He will got, read whatever you put dude, on the teleprompter. We have some really cool updates coming Call to Dynasty Call me. My GM. number is. <laughs> so My social get, security. If you get the, My mother's uh, made if you get the app, pretty soon you're going to be able to like sort by ADP. You're going to be able to, like, our player card updates are going to be absolutely <laughs> stellar. Phone. So it's going to be sweet. <laughs> That's it. it. It is going to be great. We'll be back with our next show talking about 1B quarterback. Can't wait. See you uh, tomorrow. Adios.